Hey everyone, this is Mike Andes, and you're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast. It is episode 123. We're coming to you live on YouTube. We're coming to you live on Facebook Live. Uh, and make sure, if you haven't already, subscribe on YouTube to make sure you get all of these live feeds. As well, on Facebook, you can just check us out. Just search out Business Bootcamp Podcast. Look for the orange logo. And... Uh, we can uh, get questions live from you as we are on the show. So that's kind of a new thing we just started today is Facebook streams and looking forward to doing that. Today's episode sponsor is landscapebusinesscourse.com. And if you're in the service-based industry or if you're wanting to start a landscaping business or you have any sort of inclination to grow and scale a service-based business, you're going to want to check out landscapebusinesscourse.com. It's a course that I created and we do free webinars every two weeks right now as we pre-sell the course. But even if you don't buy the course part, which is huge amounts of value and have templates and all our marketing material that we've ever used and contract templates, we have all that. But like the webinars are completely free. You get lots of value. I don't just pitch the course the whole time. I talk about the five things that keep small businesses small. And I talk about the three best ways to market your service-based businesses. And uh, we just go just really lots of value that I provide on those live webinars. So check out landscapebusinesscourse.com and you can sign up for a free webinar. Our next one is next week, next Thursday, so eight days from the day. We will be doing another uh, live webinar on landscapebusinesscourse.com. Check it out. Okay, now, today we got a couple questions that we got come in. I'm going to answer one of those and then I'm going to answer another question that has been coming in a lot. And... The a lot question is who I'm going to be voting for president. But um, the first question I want to talk about today is from Lithia. I think Lol Lithia. It's L O L I T H A. She emailed me in and she says, "Hi Mike, I just started listening to your podcast and really started to enjoy them. I have a question. Where do I go to find steps to incorporate my business?" So let me just stop on that. That's really easy one. That's a softball. Uh, just Google your state name, and then um, so w- once you Google your state name, and then just put in incorporated business or register a business online. And if you just Google that, you should be able to find what you need to do. Um, she goes on. I am a tennis coach, and right now have one player, but want to get businesses to want, want to get business in order to wait. I'm a tennis coach and right now have one player, but want to get business in order because I want to go after sponsors to finance her since she comes from a middle class family. Sincerely, Lilithia. So what it sounds like to me, Lilithia, is I'm just going to call you Miss Head because that's your last name. Um, but so yeah, you yeah you you can find incorporating stuff pretty simply on Google. Just Google your state name or wherever you live, and then incorporating or registering a business. Once you do that, um, as far as finding sponsors, that's what the question is really about and what I want to talk about today. I try to answer questions here on the podcast that I don't get a lot of or that I think people that are just kind of unique. So I haven't talked about getting sponsors before. And I've had several sponsors now on the show the last like 30 episodes. And so I have a little bit of experience about getting sponsors. And I think it's sort of generally about like finding sponsors for whether it be sports or podcasts or blogs or whatever it is there's uh finding sponsors there's there's certain things you want to do certain things you don't want to do the first thing that you want to do when you're finding a sponsor is just be really good and i think that's really the the thing that makes most people fail from getting sponsors is they're just not good enough at what they do whether it be podcasting or a blog or you're a sports person like playing tennis, you're just not good enough in order to even market to potential sponsors or get them on your team. So first of all, you got to be good enough. And if that comes to like blogging or podcasting or creating some sort of content and then looking for sponsors, good enough might be mean, might mean posting enough. It might mean quality content. It might mean a large enough following. All of those things that come into play. In other words, really, you just need to be good enough. And then the next thing you need to focus on when you're talking about sponsors is to become marketable. And so a lot of people have great followings or they even do great, they have great um, material that they put out or they are good at 
tennis or some sport, but the problem that they have is that they just don't, they aren't marketable. And what I mean by that is you have to have, so, so in other words, you've got to get, create a, an audience, a following. So like when someone's going to sponsor you, they've got to be able to get some return on their investment. And that return will come in the form of exposure. It's so like if you're playing tennis and you're wanting uh, people to sponsor your clothing and your rackets and the, the tennis balls and, and all this stuff, like you're going to have to make sure that enough eyeballs are on you. So no, number one, you have to be good enough for, to get those eyeballs, enough fans, enough followers uh, on social or whatever to where when you wear something or when you use a product that people actually see you like there's enough eyeballs there's enough following there's enough an, uh, of an audience on you and when you when you become that when you have that following when you have enough eyeballs on you then you become marketable to a potential sponsor so like for the show we didn't have sponsors for like a year and a half more than that almost, yeah more than a year and a half before like I felt we were good enough, we had a large enough audience, and that we were going to create value for our sponsor. And so when we talk about sports or blogging or whatever it is, finding sponsors, you have to one, be good enough, and two, you have to be marketable. And by, and you become marketable by building an audience and creating a following. So when, pe when you do something, people see it. Okay, like if, 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 if you're wanting to go out and get Wilson as your tennis sponsor, they're going to want to know that when they give you that tennis racket that uh, a minimum of 50,000 eyeballs are going to be seeing you with that Wilson racket and that you're going to be winning with that Wilson racket in hand when those 50,000 people see you. So that's important and I, don't, I think a lot of people jump to sponsors too fast in the blogging and, spons uh, and uh, podcasting and kind of online world. I think Athletes try to go to a sponsors too late, and they don't market themselves. Like if you created YouTube videos of you make, doing tennis moves and boot to some really good music, even hires someone or a friend or something that creates great content and can get some really cool shots of you, and then when that becomes the trend on your YouTube channel and your social media, and then it might even go a little bit viral, get you know forty, fifty thousand views. That's interesting to a sponsor when it comes to sports because they know now that you're you're capable of creating content that their product and services can be uh, sponsored in or they can be uh, uh, featured in. And so that's important and I think a lot of times when we talk about athletes getting sponsorships, not enough of them even ask for it. And obviously athletes, artists, people in creative, they need the money and, it's, and a lot of times it comes from sponsors. And a lot of times I don't feel they, they have the confidence or they don't feel like they can approach these Under Armour, Nike, Wilson, whatever company you want to name is a gazillion of them, um, GoPro, Red Bull, all these sponsors. And people, I think athletes don't approach them soon enough and number one, become marketable and number two, actually market themselves. And that is sending a video to the potential sponsor and be like, hey, like, I really think we're a great fit. This is my audience size. This is a video I was just in. This is the, 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 uh, the event that I just won uh, and really create, create, I would say create a two page or a one page infographic on some of your achievements, your audience, where your social's at, as far as following, uh, like how many things you've won in the past few years, like all of that, like your resume for uh, a potential sponsor, put that together and make it interesting in an infographic that looks appealing and send that around. I think that'd be uh, beneficial. Now, the question that has been coming in a lot as of the past two to three weeks is who I'm voting for president. So if you don't come from the U.S., you may or may not know that we are in the voting season for the president right now, and there are two candidates in the pol uh, political parties of Democratic and Republican, Democrat and Republican, and uh, so this is the deal. This is the deal. Who I'm voting for president. This is the thing that I have a problem with when it comes to voting for presidents, and that is that people believe whether it's intrinsically or or we like to put blame on other people or pass responsibility off on other people, people think that getting their 
president, their president, uh, or the person they're voting for, the person they support, they feel that they are going to have a better chance at succeeding in America. And that premise, I believe, is false. That you can put, and it's actually very risky, I believe, to put your success and your future in the hands of some, some, some political authority, whether or not you support them, it doesn't matter. Like, it does not matter who makes it into the office. It does not matter if Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or whoever gets into the, the Oval Office. They will not make you successful. And they might brag about how they're going to make jobs and they're going to create equality and give benefits and help with education and health care and all this other stuff. Bottom line, it doesn't matter who gets into office, it really still comes down to the individual as to who is going to succeed. Even in down markets when the economy is absolutely falling apart, there are people that pick things up and succeed. And they look for the ways of opportunity when everyone else is, is in downward spiral and somehow some people succeed. And it's because they don't look to the government, they don't look to a third party, they don't look to their parents, they don't look to the, the governor or the mayor or their grandpa or their uncle or their friend to support them. They are depending on themselves to create the success and to create the future that they want. And I believe that when people start talking about like elections and they start believing this ideology that if they can get their candidate into the office, that they're going to get... This is, the, this is the bottom line. The president and the, the government system of our society right now is geared to get people into the middle class. Okay, And if you don't think that's a problem, you need to read a little book one second that I'm going to get here out of this box. And I got these books because I'm going to, on the webinar next week, I'm going to be giving these books away to people. Um, if, you, if you go to landscapebusinesscourse.com, you can get a sign. Let me get this book out one second here. If you go to landscapebusinesscourse.com, and you can sign up for a webinar, and I'm going to be giving these books away. It's called The Millennial Millionaire, The Young Entrepreneur's Guide to Breaking Out of the Middle Class. In this book, I mention just a little bit about what the ideologies of government are right now. And one of their things is, is they talk so much about the middle class. Now, I don't want to go super deep on this about middle class stuff because we're talking about the presidency right now. But... The middle class is failing, and it is a trap that people have fallen into. It's the most overly, it's the highest taxed uh, income class in America, because Warren Buffett doesn't pay no 30, 40 percent of income. I tell you that. Um, the Bill Gates and the, the Zuckerbergs, they don't. They find ways to pay capital gains instead of income tax. They find ways to move money into nonprofits and move things into different corporations. And they figure out how to move their money into assets like real estate and commercial assets that are going to allow them to make, do write-offs. And the middle class, the person that's making the 50 to 150 250,000 a year and then getting a nine to five, they are the people that are getting crushed. Okay? And that's why I talk about breaking out of the middle class. It's not something to be desired of. And the government, the political system, the presidency, they always are talking about increasing the middle class. And that's because the middle class is the people who are most bound to the ideologies of America, which is like get an education, get, an, get a house. And the reason you need to get a house is because. All these political donors are these banks who, by the way, need to be kind of hand-in-hand -hand with the political system to make sure they get these mortgages passed through and they are able to get those little nice things that are that uh, we want all Americans to have a house. And in fact, when most people in America should not be buying a house. Not that they can't afford it, it's also that it's going to be tying them down in a geographical lo location. It's going to... Uh, uh, make them vulnerable to swings in the market when they really need to be chasing opportunity and putting that money into uh, a business instead of a mortgage, okay? The middle class is broken, and I believe that I think a lot of people, when they listen to the presidency debates and everything in the, the, uh, 
the race, the campaigns, the presidential campaigns, is they are trying to put the responsibility on someone else for the success. That's really the bottom line. They are trying to put their future, their education, their health care, they're trying to give give the illusion to themselves that by hiring or by voting by voting in this other person that they're somehow going to get free success. There is no such thing as free success. There's no such thing as getting it overnight. There's no such thing as electing success into office. I know I'm kind of getting worked up, but the bottom line is it doesn't matter who gets into the office, who does, who gets into presidency, who becomes governor. I'm not saying like it, it doesn't matter and you shouldn't vote or anything like that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that if you believe that by getting your candidate into the pr presidency, you're going to go become more successful, you are completely wrong and you really have to accept the fact that you are the one that are hol that is holding the reins to your success. If you're going to drive success, if you're going to push yourself forward, if you're going to get ahead, it's going to be you putting in the work. It's going to be you putting in not the 9 to 5, but the, you know, 7 till 9 p.m., you know, the 14-hour the day instead of the 4-hour the work week, you know. Um, they are... So, there's so much that goes into success and working hard and people always it's still funny people ask questions all the time on the podcast and they send me emails and they go on the website and submit questions and it's so funny like how many people ask the same thing in different form and that is how do I work less and make more money or how do I put less time into my business because it feels like I'm getting drained, but make more money and scale it and make it bigger. Like there is no secret recipe to success. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of grind. It's a lot of doing things that are uncomfortable. And then you get the success. There is no secret formula to work less, put less time in, and somehow your business takes off. And yeah, I know there's occasional like things where you know, the boss is so horrible that the less he's actually involved in the business, the, the more successful it becomes. Like, I get that. But for the majority of people, they think, if you think, it is a, it is a failed ideology to think that the less time and the less effort you put in your business, that it's somehow going to succeed in any measurable form or fashion in a greater measure than it has in the past. That is flawed. And that is why... I really could care less who I'm voting for president because I hold the reins to my success and what I'm going to do in the future and what I choose and how much work I put into my business is not the president or who he's going to, who he or she is going to elect or the, the laws he's going to put in, he or she is going to put into the land. I will work with what they give me and make sure that my success is still valid and viable. That's the, the, the mentality you have to have that regardless of who's in the office, who's in the presidency, you will succeed. They will, they will not be free handouts of success on the inauguration day, okay, regardless of who gets in. I hate to go like that. This is a business podcast and to talk about that stuff is kind of annoying, but after getting so many of these requests, uh, probably due to some people on YouTube uh, making this uh, remark about, you know, reaching out to creators and asking them to get political, um, which is fine, whatever, I get what they're saying. But bottom line is whoever gets into office will not change your future when it comes to your success. And that's what we talk about on this show. So that's it for today, everyone. This is Mike Andes. You're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast. You can check out the website, businessbootcamppodcast.com. Make sure you sign up for the webinar on, at landscapebusinesscourse.com. You're going to learn how to grow your service-based business. And if you are thinking about starting or scaling and making your landscaping business or mowing business huge, definitely want to get on there. I'm going to show you exactly how I have built my business to to gross $100,000 per month um, within the first three years of business. How to scale it up that fast. That's it for today, episode 123 on the Business Bootcamp Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Andes, signing off.